80s, beginning of the 90s. Their second album, Fitzcarraldo, contained a track called Revelate, which is universally regarded as one of the best Irish rock singles ever. And their last CD, Dance the Devil, is probably the best album by an Irish band in the last three years. Well, at least I think so. Uh, their fourth one, Call for the Birds, is about to hit the shops, and there's a, a tour that will touch all parts of Ireland in the coming months. Uh, they are The Frames, Glenn Hansard and Dave Adlam are here. But before we talk to them, let's take a short clip of uh, their video, Lay Me Down. Glenn, Dave, you're very welcome. Thanks oh, very much. How's it going? Oh, it's good, it's good, thanks. We, we sort of feel a bit like, we sort of feel like our uncle has just given us the keys to his car and he's like, take it out for a ride. <laughs> and we're, that's we're that's <laughs> what we've been saying, yeah, that this, with, with this record, because I mean, yeah. you lost the record deal and any other band at that stage would, you know, kind of be a bit unhappy about that, whereas you're treating it like a celebration. It's like suddenly we're free and it's the most relaxed that we've been to date? Well, I think we, uh, uh, over the years we've sort of developed the, uh, the, the wisdom and the, the ability to make decisions by ourselves. We're, we're, grown, we're grown lads now. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so it's, it's exciting to actually be given a shot at the wheel. Basically, uh, it, tr history has, has we, we, throughout history we've always had to fight very hard for what we wanted to achieve musically and this time we get the freedom to do it. So what's right about the album is that we get, we get to make every song exactly how we like it to be. When we get to sell it ourselves, it's almost, it's just very exciting. Uh, was that not possibly. the case with Dance the Devil? Well, da Dance the Devil was a bit like we were commissioned to make 12 paintings. We went into the, the little studio and the door was locked behind us and we were like, you know, we were told... Don't we, quite until you're ready. We yeah. let you out in a year and we were like, but we have, we'd have two records by then and, and we ended up, we submitted the first draft of the album and it was rejected. We submitted the second draft of the album, which we didn't feel was as good as the first. It was rejected. And then what ended up happening was some kid in LA was flown over to fix it to fi make, fix it and make it sound good and what ended up happening is it was uh, we ended up just absolutely just completely freaking out I had a bit of a breakdown I was like you can't do this to me to me music you know you have to just let, let us let us go please let us go and and they were actually really cool they they eventually gave in to us and let us have the record we want so dance the devil actually survived so the first the, what we have as dance the devil now the cd i have in my car is the first draft that's the one that she submitted most of it yeah, most, yeah. It's, and this, this is the strange thing we ended up going around it's a the bloody whole, great record by the way well thanks very much yeah uh, we were really happy with it when we were made it. we ended up going around the whole creative gamut to get back to where to our first most of dance the devil is demos yeah it it's amazing. extraordinary that somebody like trevor horn who you know is a musician himself uh, okay, he's, a, he's an, in, uh, an incredibly commercial musician, but he's also a fine producer. You would, under, you would think he'd have much more empathy for the artistic and creative spirit. I think what Trevor's good at, Dave probably put this better, what, De what Trevor's good at is, is make, delivering you a record. If you're a solo artist and you want success, Trevor can take your sort of sketch of a song and turn you into a star. What he's not very good with is, is having bands stay together yeah. around him because if Trevor doesn't like your drummer, he just doesn't like your drummer, and your drummer's not on the record. And you get the LA drummer in for the, you know, the session, and it'll all come out kind of nice and clean and poppy and that kind of thing. And that's that's his talent at making those kind of. I would have thought he'd have been better at preserving the integrity of the mm. artist that he was working it, it, with. Don't get us wrong; like he's a great he's a great man, and we've we've had some great times with him. And the last thing we would want to do is, is to is to diss him. But as a as a rock band, we found it really hard to work with him. Mm. Really, really. Because you worked with some really impressive people on For the Birds. I mean, you had the likes of Steve Albini, Albini producing it, who's worked with the Pixies and Nirvana. Yeah. Craig Ward, ex Deus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool. Yeah, these are, well, these are people that, and again, this is one of those things where when you're doing it on your own, you will always gravitate towards people who are thinking in the same way. Mm. And Steve was somebody who we had contacted a few years ago about recording us. And he it was, was actually supposed to do 
the previous album, Dance the Devil, but it was one of those the record company didn't think he'd be the right kind of person to do it. So, oh, well, the man who did Nirvana wouldn't be, wouldn't be. Uh, exactly. Yeah, this is exactly what he we can't said. make like, saleable okay, records. Oh yeah. God! Yeah. Like, things. The more things change, the more they stay the same. In <laughs> yeah, music. Exactly. This is extraordinary. Listen to me. Um, you, the, I have no doubt that people will be hearing the record on the radio. You're going to. You're literally going to tour the country again. Would you do that all the time anyway? But you're going to hit every part of the country this time, aren't you? Yeah, we're going to try to do as much as possible. What we're going to do with this tour is tr try to play smaller venues over more nights, just because. Right. It, what we found with this al with this album is, is kind of like our most uh, introspective album. So what we're going to try to do is deliver it honestly and yeah, on big stages, yeah, on yeah. an intimate setting. So that's kind of the way. Well, we're listen to me. Um, can we have another taste of, uh, of what's on the on the record? Um, Headlong? Would that be possible? Sure. Yeah. Would you please? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Yeah, okay. The frames. Ben Hansen from Dave Odlum, part of them. At any rate, the album is called For the Birds. This is a track from it called Headlong. Well, I never want to land. Cause I'm high on you Beyond all slatter And tell me if you're sure And I won't So act a little braver 